Welcome to This Honest Food, where we get honest about what's been holding you back from being your happiest, healthiest, best self. Food changes everything, and it all starts right here with This Honest Food. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. I'm Dawn Viola, a certified executive chef and holistic nutrition expert. I help people with food allergies and other autoimmune disease navigate their way back to good health through holistic health coaching, food, and cooking. So today I'm talking about, it's a pretty pretty touchy subject, and I want everyone to keep an open mind and really listen to what I'm saying before you all freak out, because this is a super touchy subject. So I'm sure by now you've all heard about, read about, um, maybe you've even seen the 2016 Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Issues. So they have three different cover options. Two of the covers feature two different, very thin, very beautiful models. The third cover option features a very curvy, beautiful model by the name of Ashley Graham, who happens to be considered a plus-size model. So I've, I've seen it reported as a size 18. She claims it's a 14, 16, but regardless, she is in that plus size category. And there's, there's absolutely no doubt. There's no argument. These three women are gorgeous. They're beautiful. And I'm sure they're all very smart and I'm sure they're all very good people. But it's something that Ashley said, the curvy model said during an interview that really made me stop and think. And I didn't agree with her at all. And in fact, this same type of statement has been made in the past by other models, other celebrities on both television and print. And I didn't agree with it then either. So when Ashley was asked how she felt about being the first plus size model on the cover of Sports Illustrated, essentially making history, essentially breaking down barriers and stereotypes about large women, plus size women, and how they're viewed, we heard The usual, you know, like things you might expect her to say. So there were a lot of words similar to what I just said. So the words empowered, um, the phrase real women, role model, making history, breaking down barriers. Beauty is not one size fits all, which I love. I love that. Beauty is not one size fits all. But then she went and said this. And I'm happy to be the trailblazer. But come on, man. Come on, the average size American woman is a 14. Okay, is that a good thing? Because it implies that the average woman in the United States is plus size. And that we need to embrace that and that we need to be accepting of that and be big and proud of that. I agree, beauty is not one size fits all. But I think we're confusing two different things here. We're confusing beauty with health. Two different concepts, beauty and health. And I don't think proclaiming big and proud is necessarily a good thing. Unless you're healthy. And that's the key. Are you healthy? This movement of big and proud can be dangerous because it ignores someone's state of well-being and it it gives them the thumbs up to ignore health. You know, they might be thinking, heck, I'm never going to be a size two, so I'm going to be proud of who I am and embrace my size and be me. And yes, I totally agree with that. If you're truly healthy, mind, spirit, and body, I 100% support, self-confidence, empowerment, feeling good in your own skin, you know, having high self-esteem that all plays a huge part in being healthy, but it's not all right to just accept being overweight and deciding you're going to be big and proud about it. If you're pre-diabetic or already have type two diabetes, if you have heart issues, blood pressure problems, skin problems, acne psoriasis, eczema, if you have joint pain, if you experience migraine headaches, if you have stomach or digestion issues, 
being big and proud is going to slowly kill you cell by cell if you just sit back and accept that's the way that it's going to be. And I want you to be around for a really long time. And I want your mind and your body to be well. And the same holds true for the opposite side of the spectrum. You could be very thin and very unhealthy or average size or athletic and still be very unhealthy. So everyone's different. Every body type is different. Every nutritional need is different. So the bottom line is really asking the question, are you healthy? Are you? Let me know because if you answered no or you're not sure, this is really where working with a health coach like me can can come in handy because taking those first steps in what seems like an overwhelming process to put yourself on a path to wellness is really what we're all about. So in another podcast, um, the title of that is Weight Loss Programs Exposed. I talk about the five steps to good health. It's a very simple process. It's not always an easy process, but it's, it's very simple. And the first step is becoming a micromanager of your life to completely take control over every little detail and not just accepting things as they are because they seem impossible. Because I know it's not impossible. And I believe in you. And I know that you can do this. So I hope that this information has inspired you all. And if you have any questions about anything we talked about today, you can email me anytime at dawn at thishonestfood.com. That's T-H-I-S, honestfood.com. And of course, you can visit the website, thishonestfood.com. And if you can't find what you're looking for, let me know because I'm always happy to point you in the right direction for resources or research that you'd like to do on your own. So thanks so much for listening, everyone. Please be well, and I will talk with you all very soon. The best way you can support the show is to share it with your friends and family. Go to thishonestfood.com, that's T-H-I-S, honestfood.com, and subscribe to our newsletter for updates so you don't miss a thing. You've been listening to This Honest Food.